Hi, this is a quick introduction to text processing for CSC 111. So the idea here is we're going to look at the play and we're going to try to extract information about the dynamics between um, different characters by looking for ways in which the text um, portrays some, some interesting relationships uh, going on. So um, I'm going to ask you to play with the whole play, but when you debug your program, definitely work with something much simpler. And here, what I've, I've done is that I've, I have a, a, just a few lines. They uh, don't necessarily are part of the, the play. I've, I've taken them and I've added different things. But uh, what you see in the play is that um, every character who says something has her or his name at the beginning followed by a colon, all in uppercase. So it's very easy to see who's saying what. Uh, and, and whatever is being said by this, um, this character is on one line. No matter if it's a very long line, it's going to be on one line. There's not going to be backslash ends in there. So let's run the program and verify that what I have here, this very simple loop, is allowing me to go through all my lines. So what I've done here is I've taken text, which is a long string, triple double quotes, and I've used split lines, the method to split it into a, a list of lines. And for each line in this list, I'm going to print it. So that's what happens here. Now, let's assume that I'm um, interested in the word live. Let's assume that it's a, it's a keyword of interest for me. And I want to say, see who ever says this keyword. So one thing that I want to do is instead of printing all the line, I want to print only those that contain that. So I need a test. If line find live, my keyword, if that is not minus one, we know that find returns minus one if whatever you're asking it to search in the string is, is not there. That's going to be minus one. So if, if it finds it, it's going to be a number zero, one, two, three is going to be positive. All right, so I'm going to print the line only if live is contained. Let's verify that. All right, so um, now I see that Stanley and uh, Stella have said that. Um, let's also just to uh, illustrate the point. Let me add this line at the at the end as well. So now I have three times my keyword in my text, and you see that I have the three lines that are pronounced by my three um, my three characters. Let's see if we could if we could figure out that Stella said it twice and Stanley only once. Well, if you want to count things and you have a, a loop and you're going to go through items, the reflect should be, I need a counter. So let's create a counter here. And I'm going to, that's going to be the counter for um, Stella. So I'm going to, before the loop, assume that she hasn't said anything yet, so the counter is zero. And then if I find the keyword, then I don't necessarily want to increment this counter unless I'm sure that it's Stella who says, says it. And I know that it's going to be Stella if this word here is in my line. So if I find live and if line find Stella with a colon is not minus one, then in that case, I can say, all right, I can increment my counter. This is one more time that Stella is actually say, um, saying it. Count Stella equals count. Stella plus one. All right, and then outside the loop, right here, when I'm done, I may well want to look at the counter and see how many times, if ever, if any, Stella said the, the keyword that I'm interested in. Okay, so in this case, I have two. Good, which is which is correct. She said the keyword twice. It appears here, it appears there, and now I'm able to to do that. So if I'm interested in if, if Stella said it or not, well, you see that what I could do, I could use a counter, and then at the end, I could check whether that counter is zero or not, in which case I would know whether Stella said it. That's one way to do that. Another option is to use a Boolean variable, and I'd prefer you to do that just because we've been playing with Booleans. So I'm going to create a variable called Stella says, and I'm going to assume that it's false always because I haven't started here, I haven't started my loop, so I don't know that Stella has said the keyword or not. And then 
I'm going to keep the same infrastructure that I have here. If I find a keyword of interest in my line, and if I see that Stella has said it, then I should change this Boolean to say, well, now I know she's said that keyword, so I'm going to change it to true. And at the end, when I'm outside the loop, I'm going to print this. And see here, she actually says it. Um, you always want to verify that this is true. What, so change, change the keyword to something else that you know uh, is not being said here. For example, I know there's no chocolate in here. It would say false. So, okay, my program works. I'm pretty satisfied. It should be live without an S. All right, so now I have that. Let's assume that I want the first one. I'm interested in the first location of where that keyword uh, appears. So I want only one output, and I don't want any of the, the other lines. Well, a very simple way to do that would be to say, well, I'm going to break. And if you do that, then you get the first line. Break, remember, will break out of a for loop. A break doesn't work with the if statement, but if it is inside an if statement, it's going to break out of the for, the next for loop that is outside. So um, that should be enough to get you started with the second part of um, the lab today on text processing. Hope this helps.